So we're coming out today to empty totes. Uh, it hasn't really warmed up during the days. It's been pretty cold. We don't have a lot of sap in here, but there's enough to go ahead and collect. So the last couple years have been kind of touch and go for collection sap and doing maple syrup. Last year we were we did okay. Um, I always worry every year though with you know the way the weather is that it's going to end up getting warm and then staying warm or not going up and down like it like it has been previous years. So just go ahead and we take our hose put it down there. This one, make sure those are open. Kind of hear the sap running into this one here. Since uh, you've kind of seen how we do all this already, kind of let you know how we used to do it. Um, you know, we've been doing this, I think this is like my eighth year, seventh, eighth year. Uh, when we first started out, we did the five gallon buckets on the trees. Uh, each tree had a bucket that we went to and emptied into you know, a bigger bucket. And I used to actually pull it out on sleds years ago when we first started. You know, I only had maybe 10, 15 trees tapped because it was just too much work to pull the sleds up with uh, sap in them. So we quit once we started going to this kind of a line and putting taps in, uh, I actually had really not this line, but the taps that we have now, we had five gallon buckets with handles that were closed. They used to be old rennet buckets from the cheese factory. And those I would just put a tap in and then run them into those. Um, and then after that, we got the four wheeler and I was able to I made a bracket that would hold like four totes in the or three totes or three buckets in the front and four buckets in the back and I'd take them up that way and then I would dump them into a tote on the back of the pickup. Then after a while I made a bigger bracket for the back where I could haul eight five gallon buckets on the back 
and then go ahead and I was still carrying three on the front otherwise there was too much weight on the back um, and then the next year after that we graduated to more of this type of a line where we had the totes to empty and then I did them with on the four-wheeler but then I had a 55 gallon drum on the back of the four-wheeler and a 15 gallon drum on the front and we had a little electric pump that ran off of a battery that we would pump out of these and then I'd fill the front one on the four-wheeler first and then I would go ahead and fill the back one I had different valves to fill one tank or the other and then I would drive that up the hill and unload it and come down then uh, the end of last year the pump kind of quit working it was just taking way too long to pump these off and I was here in the dark pumping because it did take a long time like that pump I think was rated at 400 gallons an hour that would pump so when you're trying to fill a 250 gallon tote running back and forth it just took a long time to do it then I went ahead and bought the gas powered pump and was using the four-wheeler last year to do that and that worked a lot nicer um, to pump it onto the four-wheeler it didn't take very long and then pump it onto the totes and then I had an issue with the four-wheeler that it was just too much weight on the four-wheeler so the end of last year we used uh, a Kubota like I was saying like this a smaller version of this that we ended up putting a 250 gallon tote right in the back of it and then pump onto the tote from these totes like I was saying you know it's too much weight to fill one of these totes because even you know even if we only filled it up to the 200 gallon mark if you figure eight to nine pounds to the gallon that was uh, you know a hundred gallons would be 900 pounds so 200 would be about 1600 pounds so one of these full was too much weight for the Kubota but if you didn't fill them when you were going up the hill it would start, start sloshing so if you got it this tall on the back and you got sap in the ear once it gets sloshing it would kind of rock the Kubota so that's why this year we decided to go with individual five, 55 gallon drums and then only putting three of them in so three of those full you know is gonna be what was I figuring about 1100 1100 to 1200 pounds depending on the sugar content and the weight of the sap but that's about what this max is out max is out at and it actually takes it up the hill fairly well so that's kind of how we used to do it um, we've graduated a lot since then um, once we start evaporating I'll explain how I started out evaporating and all that stuff too but this was just a little information on how we actually started collecting the sap um, now we have like I said we have the lines in and we probably have close to 250 taps out maybe 300 we didn't get them all counted like I thought we were going to we kind of lost track um, but there are quite a few trees tapped and uh, we're thinking this season might end up being shorter you know it looked really good on the weather for the last week and a half looked great for doing sap well today there's only been like two decent days of running the first year we tapped the season lasted close to a month it was like four almost five weeks then every year since then it's been dwindling back down like I think last year we had an equivalent of probably six or seven really nice running days uh, that we could collect and actually boil down this year we've got maybe two so far but you know the forecast does look good for the next two weeks out so this might be a great year uh, but we don't know till it comes around um, it always seems the temperature here is different than what we have at home we only live like five miles away and uh, on this farm here it always seems to be colder up here on the ridge uh, so even if it doesn't get quite cold enough at home it's usually cold enough at night to make the sap run as long as it gets warmer during the days you know the days seem to be pretty close to the same uh, sometimes it's a little colder here but not a whole lot so 
I'm gonna keep going pumping this off and uh, like I said when we get back to the house and start boiling I'll explain to you how we started boiling that's a interesting story too so thanks for watching So while we were, were unloading, I noticed that these barrels started to uh, collapse from the suction of the pump. What I was assuming would happen, that I would be able to just pull air back from here and then pull the sap out of this and suck it into this barrel. But I think what was happening, it was sucking it from this, these barrels before this barrel actually started to empty. So what it did is it started to collapse these barrels from the suction. Um, it's not a big deal, it just kind of loosens up my straps a little bit, but I'm not going to want to tighten them back up because once we go back down and get more sap, once we pump it in, we're going to be able to blow them back out again. But um, I thought that was kind of odd, I just assumed that it would pull directly from here, let the air in here, and pull this out. But I'm assuming since this was a liquid up here, it tried to pull the excess air that was up in here already. I'm assuming it tried to pull from that first before it started emptying that. That's the only thing I can think of. Um, I had it happen before when I just had a single barrel and I would forget to open the vent and then that would do the same thing it would collapse the barrel i didn't think it would do it with two barrels but so once again we'll have to try to figure out what's what why it's doing it and uh we'll see if we can fix it so this is bill from my fine homestead uh we got her loaded up and ready to head back to the farm we got like a half a half a tote of sap, so we have a half a tote of sap at home. So that'll be a full tote of sap, which is about what I want to start evaporating with. Um, it takes about 75 gallons to fill the evaporator, and once I get running through, uh, 200 gallons is just just about right what I want to start with before I even start the evaporator up. So we're good to go. We're going to go on load this. And thanks for watching Maple Syrup Season Part 6.